you all very much. Uh, it's an honor to be with the Prime Minister of Ireland. We've known each other now for quite a while, and we have a great relationship, and a great relationship with Ireland, and uh, we have a lot to discuss. Uh, we will be uh, talking about the obvious, and we'll also be talking about the virus that's hit the world. I see uh, they, they've canceled their big soccer games, their championship games, and a lot of other games. They've canceled a lot over in Europe and all over the world. So this is a big world problem. Uh, we've taken some bold steps. We took the original boldest step of all when we closed very early with China. That helped us uh, save thousands of lives. And we went very early with Europe. And uh, I think that'll likewise be very good. And hopefully we can get it back together very quickly in terms of uh, reestablishing uh, with China. That's on track to something happen fairly quickly, because they've made a lot of progress over the last uh, three or four weeks. And uh, certainly with Europe, we think we can go hopefully very quickly. They have some hot spots that are really bad, but uh, they'll get them better. Germany, I guess, has some problems now. Uh, France has some problems, some pretty big problems. And Italy, of course, is uh, probably record-setting in terms of what they've gone through. Italy's having a very hard time. Uh, but we think we'll reestablish very quickly once this ends. And it's just a question of time. And I think it'll go pretty quickly. Uh, stay away from uh, people and wash your hands and do all of the things that we're supposed to be doing a little bit anyway. But it'll be uh, — it'll go very quickly. I know that uh, we were just talking that uh, Ireland's closed their schools. And uh, maybe I'd uh, ask the Prime Minister to say a little bit about what you're doing in Ireland yeah. having to do with what we're going through. Hey, well, first of all, thank you, Mr. President, for having us again here today in the run-up to St. Patrick's Day. Um, just another opportunity, I think, to show how close Ireland and America are and how good our relationship is politically and economically yeah. and everything else. And St. Patrick's Day has become, I think, a symbol of how close uh, Ireland and America are and how we're going to continue to stay close uh, into the future. Um, the big concern in Ireland and Europe at the moment, as you know, is COVID-19. Uh, and we've acted uh, just as you've acted decisively in the last couple of days. So uh, we have restrictions on travel, for example, at Italy for a few days already. But uh, as of tomorrow, uh, our schools will close, our creches will close. Um, we're banning all indoor gatherings of uh, more than 100 people and outdoor gatherings of more than 500. And this is all based on the right. public health advice right, from, sure. from our CDC that we need to do this for a couple of weeks uh, to make sure the virus doesn't spread. And we're particularly trying to protect older people and people with chronic diseases. So we've had about 30 or 40 cases so far, one death. But we were real concerned that that could rise, and that's why we're taking the action that we're taking. Um, but as you know, it's, it's a virus that's gone pandemic. Um, it's all over the world, knows no borders, knows no uh, nationalities. And I think we all need to work together in the world on this, and America in particular. You're the richest country in the world. You've got great scientists, great companies, great universities, and we need them working on treatments, working on tests, and working on a vaccine, because that's, that's, that's what will get us on top of this. Right, and we're making great progress there, I will say. And I was with the Vice President this morning, who right. I know is heading up the task force for right. you, and uh, he gave me a lot of confidence that you're, you're getting on top of this and you're investing in this. Right. Mr. President, can you confirm that Ireland will be excluded from your travel ban, that your, your European travel ban you announced last night? Well, I think no, and I think it was very, made very clear last night who is and who isn't. Uh, and uh, we'll be discussing that. We'll be discussing some of the moves that we're going to be making. And uh, I think it's going to work out very well for everybody. But uh, it's a world problem, and uh, you do need separation in some cases. You have some areas that are very heavily infected. And you have some areas that aren't, frankly, but uh, we do need separation for a little period of time in some cases. Just saying that, that, that the, pre the, president, uh, the president has excluded Ireland from the travel ban. Uh, and one of the things we have in Ireland is CBP, American Border Security in Ireland. Went through it myself yesterday, and they were asking the right questions whether people had been to China, things like that. So um, that puts us in a slightly different position. And one of the reasons. Uh, UK basically has been uh, it's got the border it's got very strong borders and uh, they're they're doing a very good job they don't have very much infection at this point and hopefully they'll keep it that way Mr President um, there are many European leaders who are upset that they weren't consulted about the travel ban can you explain your rationale 
for not consulting with them first before announcing it last night? Well, uh, we get along very well with the European leaders, but we had to make a decision, and I didn't want to take time. Of, and, you know, it takes a long time to make the individual calls, and uh, we are calling, and we have spoken to some of them prior to, uh, some of the majors prior to. But we had to move quickly. I mean, when they raise taxes on us, they don't consult us. And I think that's probably uh, one and the same. They've uh, done things. Uh, the European Union, as you know, has done uh, some very big tax raises over the years. Not so much with me, because I won't put up with it. Uh, but uh, they haven't uh, consulted us. And uh, in the case of uh, European Union, I've consulted with many people. Do you have any idea what the overall economic impact of these travel restrictions well, it'll will be? Well, it'll be a big impact, but it's a bigger impact, and it's also a human impact, which is more important, frankly, than the financial, uh, when you lose thousands of additional lives. As an example, if I didn't close uh, very, very early, uh, Leo, you know, we closed very early with China, and I took a lot of heat, including from you people, a lot of heat. They called me everything from a racist to everything else. It was terrible. And uh, the same people, uh, then they say, oh, he closed too fast. Why did he close? Most of them said, why did he close with China? That turned out to be a great move. What we did with Europe is uh, this was the time. And China, a lot of it came from uh, when, you, when you think of what happened to Europe, because it was very fast and very furious. And what happened is a lot of people went from China into Europe, and Europe suffered tremendously. You know, you see what's going on. And so I just wanted that to stop as it pertains to the United States. And that's what we've done. We've stopped. What are your plans, Mr. President, about campaign rallies, about travel outside the White House? You originally had some travel on the schedule for tonight. We had some big rallies. We canceled one that we were thinking about doing in uh, Las Vegas, as you know, and one in uh, Reno, Nevada. Uh, we had one. Uh, we had about three of them in Nevada, actually. And we had. Uh, Four or five of them that we were thinking about. We have a big one in Tampa, all sold out. We have over 100,000 requests for tickets. But I think we'll probably not do it because people would say it's better to not do. You know, we need a little separation until such time as this goes away. It's going to go away. It's going to go away. I was watching <laughs> Scott. I was watching Scott this morning, and he was saying within two months. But, you know, in the meantime, uh, we want to lose as few people as possible. So important. And what is the, the number as of this morning? Is it 32? You could tell me. Is it 32 deaths? Steve, around that. I mean, think of it. The United States, because of what I did and what the administration did with China, we have 32 deaths at this point. Other countries that are smaller countries have many, many deaths. 32 is a lot. 32 is too many. But when you look at the kind of uh, numbers that you're seeing coming out of other com countries, it's pretty amazing when you think of it. So. That's it. Yeah, um, yeah, yes. Steve, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Well, we have things that uh, I can do. Uh, we have very strong emergency powers under the Stafford Act. And uh, we are, we have it, I mean, I have it memorized practically as to uh, the powers in that act. And if I need to do something, I'll do it. I have the right to do a lot of things that people don't even know about. Are you do that today? Well, I don't want to say that. But, you know, at some point, it may be some of the more minor things at this point. But, you know, look, we're in, we're in great shape. Compared to other places, uh, we are in really good shape. And we want to keep it that way. That's why I did the ban with respect to Europe. Mr. 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 I have a lot of emergency actions that I can take. Yeah. What are you looking at to help American workers? Well, we're looking at a lot of things, including paid leave, and, and we're looking at many things. We're also making sure they're going to get their salaries. We have other workers, too. And those are people that work for tips, and nobody thinks about them. And we're including them in a lot of our schedules. Uh, we're also making sure that the companies, which are good companies, stay solvent, have the money necessary to keep functioning. So we have a lot of things that we're working on with the financial markets, and uh, it's going to work out fine. You know, we're, we're, you have to remember the stock market, as an example, is still much higher than when I got here. And it's taken a big hit. But it's going to all bounce back, and it's going to bounce back very big at the right time. When will you decide, though, for the American workers, what steps Well, we're deciding you right now. And we're, de we're dealing also, prior to even the Stafford Act, we're dealing with the Democrats in Congress. We'll see what can be done. I happen to think that a payroll uh, tax cut would be a very good idea. It very, you know, distributes it, really distributes it 
very evenly among middle class and other workers. I mean, many workers. It would be a great thing. I happen to think it would be a great thing even beyond this, okay? Uh, so we're looking at the payroll tax cut, uh, and that won't come immediately because that's a, a stronger measure. But we are looking to do that, and I think at the right time, Congress will probably go along with it because it really is the most sensible thing. We had the biggest bankers in the world here yesterday getting their opinions. They all thought payroll tax cut would be a great thing. It would evenly and quickly distribute a lot of money. Do you support the House bill, the House Democrat bill? No, uh, because there are things in there that have nothing to do with what we're talking about. So, you know, it's not a, it's not a way for them to get some of the goodies that they haven't been able to get for the last uh, 25 years. Always, always, always. Just like your prime minister, always. They will be uh, not only welcome, loved. We have uh, millions. What is the number now, would you say? It changes every year. It gets actually bigger. Yeah, well, 30, uh, about 35 million are yeah, Can you imagine? Irish, it's got to be one of our... It's got to be one of our biggest. Uh, now, we, uh, we love the Irish. We're going to be looking at that. We're going to be talking about that today. It's a very important part of our conversation. That's going to be actually a very important part of our conversation today. We're concerned about Huawei, Chinese telecoms company and its operations and connections with countries like Ireland? Is that well, I think there's a lack of security. If they use Huawei, uh, there's a real problem with intelligence and intelligence security. And uh, we'll see what happens. We'll be discussing that point also. Mr. President, can Americans still bring back coronavirus under this new travel restriction? Can I what? Can Americans still bring back coronavirus? Sure, but we have them very heavily tested. If an American's coming back or anybody's coming back, we're testing. We have a tremendous testing set up where people coming in have to be tested. And if they are positive and if they're able to get through, because if they're, frankly, if they're, if they're not, we're not putting them on planes if, they're, if it shows positive. But if they are, if they do come here, they have to, we're quarantined. It's going to be a pretty strong enforcement of quarantine. Look, the key is you have to have separation. We have to have separation or this thing takes longer to go away. But the, the real, really important, and I think you can say this for your country, I think we can say it for a lot of countries, for all countries, hopefully, it goes away. It's going away. We want it to go away with very, very few deaths. Uh, people have, uh, you know, we call it cases. How many cases do you have? Well, relative to other countries, we have very few cases. Relative to certain of the, of the major countries that really have a bigger problem than uh, us. We've offered by the, ra just interestingly, I think we have the greatest doctors in the world. We've offered Iran assistance. Iran is having a tremendous problem. And uh, we have offered Iran assistance. Uh, if they'd like it, we will help them. We'd be glad to help them. Speaking of Iran, Mr. President, the Pentagon has determined that an Iranian-backed militia fired the rockets that killed two American yeah. soldiers in Iraq. Yeah. Should they expect a response? Uh, I'd rather not say, but let's just put it this way. You will see. Mr. President. Okay? But I can't say. I, I was uh, working on that last night also. They sent uh, a lot of rockets now. That hasn't been fully determined. It was Iran, as you know. It was a, it was a rebel group. Uh, but most likely, it looked like it could be backed by Iran. And uh, we'll see what uh, the response is. Mr. President, would you like to see the Prime Minister return to the White House next year? He's trying to form a government at home. Would you like to see him back? Well, he's Prime a friend. Minister? I always want him to return because he's a friend. We've been doing this now for quite a while. We started off both, uh, both new to the job. And uh, yes, I would always like to see him. I know they have other people that I know and I get along with very well. Look, we get along with the country, but uh, this is a very special guy. We'd, we'd like to see you back in, back in Ireland again for, well, we'll, for a we'll longer visit, I hope, next we'll time. Would you like to see uh, Mr. President re-elected in November? Well, that, that, that's, that's, of course, a matter for the American people, but uh, President Trump uh, and any American president is always welcome in Ireland. Mr. Mr. President, there's a report that a press aide to Bolsonaro, Brazil's Bolsonaro, may have the coronavirus. Are you aware of that? Because you were in contact with that person yeah. over the weekend. I did hear something about that. We had dinner together in Florida in, uh, at Mar-a-Lago uh, with the entire delegation. Uh, I don't know if it, the press aide was there. If he was there, he was there. Uh, but uh, we did. We did nothing very unusual. We sat next to each other for a period of time, had a great conversation. He's doing a terrific job in Brazil. And uh, we'll find out what happens. I guess they're being tested right now, right? Well, I'm, I'm 
I'm sure. You whatever you can provide. I'm, let's put it this way. I'm not concerned. Okay. Mr. President, sure. yesterday we heard from an emergency room physician in Houston who had a patient who was showing symptoms of something, tested negative for the flu. This physician wanted to test this person for coronavirus and, and got caught in what this doctor described as an infinite loop of stupid, <laughs> trying to get through to the, the public health agencies in Texas, trying to get permission uh, for this person to be tested. Is there something you can do as the president to try to well, cut no, through I, those bottlenecks? I was watching. They have a million tests out now. They're going to have, uh, over the next few days, they're going to have four million tests out. And uh, frankly, the testing has been going very smooth. If you go to the right agency, if you go to the right area, you get the test. Uh, now, this, this with, with that being said, right as you know, millions are being produced. This is a brand new thing that just happened. But millions are being produced. But uh, if you go back and look at the swine flu and what happened with the swine flu, you'll see how many people died and how actually nothing was done for such a long period of time as people were dying all over the place. We're doing it the opposite. We're very much ahead of everything. This person did contact the correct authorities, but they were closed for the day. Then he was on hold for an hour, simply trying to get a test. Well, you're talking about one case. I mean, I could certainly look into it, Jen. It's one case. I've heard also it goes very well. I watched Scott Gott Gottlieb today, who uh, was with us, and I respect him a lot. I like him, and I respect him. And he was talking about uh, how we have so many different tests. And in some cases, they're in California, where we have too many. And then in other cases, the distribution could be a little bit better for certain areas. But we've done a good job on testing, and uh, it was very interesting. You might ask Scott about it, actually. You, President, President Trump, Trump, President, 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 but I thought it was an important thing to do because of what's happening over there. So, 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 so,
then it was nine. I'm reading this list every week. Then it was 13, then it was 22, and now I guess it's over 100 countries. So it's, a, it's an amazing thing how fast this one spreads. This is, this is a very fast spreader. Any, any more thoughts about the Tokyo Olympics? No, I just uh, wish the Prime Minister, he's a great friend of mine, Prime Minister Abe, and I wish him luck. They did such a perfect job. The venues are incredible. He was proudly showing me pictures of what they'd done the last time I was with him. This is before this came up. And I said, what a job. And they built it very well. They built it on budget, right on, even under budget. Uh, and they're beautiful facilities. I don't know. I mean, it's very possible. It's very possible that for the Olympics, maybe I just can't see having no people there. In other words, not allowing people. Maybe, and this is just my idea, maybe they postpone it for a year. Maybe they do that if that's possible. Maybe they, maybe that's not possible. I guess it's never happened with the Olympics. Although I think there was interruption for wars. It's been canceled. Yeah. Right? It was canceled or interruption. But I would say maybe they postpone it for a year. It's a shame because, really, I'm, you know, I used to be in the real estate business, as you probably heard. They built some real, and I, I built beautiful buildings, and they built some really beautiful buildings. Would you make that yes, recommendation to your friends, Shinzo Abe? No, no, they're very smart. They're going to make their own. But, you know, I, I like that better than I like having empty stadiums all over the place. I think if you cancel it, make it a year later, that's a better alternative than doing it with no crowd. Well, we didn't shake hands today, and uh, we looked at each other, and we said, what are we going to do? You know, it's sort of a weird feeling. I think we and we said this. at the same time, we did this. You know, I just got back from India, and I didn't shake any hands there, and it was very easy, because they go like this, and Japan goes like this. Uh, they were ahead of the curve, okay? <laughs> now, we looked at each other, and we said, and we also had a lot of press staring at us, right? We're saying, are we supposed to shake hands? And when his group of very smart representatives uh, came in, who I know. Uh, likewise, we didn't. It's a very strange feeling. And you know, I was never a big handshaker, as you've probably heard. Uh, but once you become uh, a politician, shaking hands is very normal. And it's a very strange feeling when people that you know and like, they walk up and say hi, and they're just like this. Uh, we were saying it's a little bit. It it's feels, a little bit it almost, different. It almost feels feels impersonal. It feels like you're being rude, but. We just can't yeah. afford to think like that for the next few weeks. And Mr. President, uh, could, could you talk about the, the trickle-through effect of everything that we're seeing here? It's like when you when you cancel an NBA season, you're losing all of the revenue oh, for the teams, the vendors. I mean, that, it's that way all through the entire economy. Yeah, it has an, a, an obvious effect. The only thing worse can be that you lose thousands and thousands of people more than you would have lost if you did it the way we're doing it. So it certainly has an impact. And again, we're very much uh, working with the states, because, you know, the states are a smaller form of government. They can control individual arenas and individual things better. And it's different for different areas. Some areas have no problem whatsoever in our country, and others do. So we're working with the governors of the various states, and it's, I think it's working very well. I think the relationship has been very well, good with California and some others that, that in particular have been hit. Mr. President, Mr. President, Joe Biden down presidential runoff. Are you happy? Yeah, I'm happy. Whoever it is, I hope they make their choice soon. I thought it was going to be, everybody thought it was going to be Bernie. And I've said, Elizabeth Warren, if she waited for, you know, she waited that extra three days, four days, and uh, Super Tuesday was a disaster, he would have won every one of those states, or almost, I think almost every one of those states. Maine, Massachusetts, Texas. You take a look at the states that were very close, and many of her, I would say most of her, I would almost say all of hers, but many of her votes would have gone to him. So had she left prior to Super Tuesday, which is just a few days, uh, he would have right now been declared virtually the winner. It would have been over. But now we have Joe, and I'm very happy to run against Joe. Don't forget, one of the reasons I ran for president is because of Joe and the job they did. So it's one of the reasons. So in a way, it's in a way, it's a, you know, it's uh, it's maybe the the way it should be. But it looks to me like it would be Biden would win. Are you worried that Irish Americans might go for Joe? Travel restrictions within the United States, such as Washington State or California. We haven't discussed that yet. Is it a possibility? Yes. If somebody gets a little bit out of control, if an area gets too hot. You see what they're doing in New Rochelle, which is uh, 
which is good, frankly. It's the right thing. But not, it's not enforced. It's not very strong. But people know they're, they're being watched. New Rochelle, that's a hot spot. Just a, a separate topic. You spoke to the Saudi Crown Prince the other day. I did. What did you tell him about the oil market? Well, I asked him what's going on. Are they having a dispute with Russia? This is something that uh, drove oil prices down. And one thing I can tell you is oil prices that are at a point now that I would have dreamed about because uh, the gasoline prices are going to be coming way down. They'll be coming way down. So with gasoline prices coming down, that's like a tax cut. Frankly, that's like a big tax cut, not a little tax cut for the consumer. So there's something about that that I like. But Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.